Battlefield 5 update! An important update for T-Series. But most importantly of all, puddles. No. Good evening, I'm Poppy Harlow, the most news person in the news. Our first story comes from Battlefield 5. This is an update from last week. Apparently Battlefield 5 had really bad amount of pre-orders, lacking 85% behind Call of Duty. Ugh, that sucks. Some people, a bunch of idiots, I'm not supposed to add my opinion, but said this was because Red of Redemption is coming out. It's because Call of Duty is coming out. It's just oversaturated in October. Mm -mm -mm. The true Chads knew what the reason was behind this. And of course it was because the chief design officer of Battlefield said, if you don't like our trailer, you are uneducated. And then he mysteriously left the company, as you do two months before a release. And I try to explain in the video why I think people didn't like the trailer, myself included, okay? They have done really bad at job at marketing Battlefield so far, and I broke that down. But I still saw a lot of people commenting, I don't know, it doesn't look like a bionic arm, just like a prosthetic. I called it a bionic arm, it's a prosthetic arm, I know the difference, I just misspoke, okay? <laughs> We don't get our education about how wars were from games. Sure, they can do that, but it's not their job. It's a school's job. I couldn't get less Fs about what's in Battlefield. I wasn't at the war and I wouldn't play to relive it either. Yes, the trailer just being a statement is kind of dumb. However, people going numb over that just as dumb. So they're basically, you're calling me dumb for saying this trailer is dumb? Anyway. It seemed like so many people didn't understand what I was talking about, so I will reiterate, just to make this point crystal clear, okay? This is important, stop, okay? I'm not even gonna pretend that the Battlefield 5 trailer is not the most important thing in the entire universe. You have to understand, companies aren't mortal beings, okay? They will say and do whatever that will bring them more sales. They don't think like human beings because they're not humans. The problem I have and a lot of people have with the trailer is not the fact that there's a woman in it. People aren't going, Ree! there's a woman. No one cares, okay? And to be 100% clear, I don't have a problem with women in power. In fact, I encourage it, okay? You wanna do that? Great, good for you. But when you're simulating a war, okay? They know that they have to work within a certain framework, okay? If they didn't, people would get pissed off. And that's what happened here. Yes, you can say, oh, well, uh, there were no flamethrowers in the Battle of Shabakabal, and uh, no one cares about that. Yes, you're talking about objects. Here we're talking about people, we're talking about human beings, we're talking about history. If Battlefield 5 said they're doing a World War game where Swedes are fighting Nazis in the trenches, people would comment about it in the same way, saying, well, that didn't really happen, did it? And then their response would be, oh, well, actually, 8,000 Swedish people did fight in the war, so checkmate. It's like, that's not the point. Yes, there were women in World War II, but it's not a plausible scenario. <laughs> So if you want to make the statement of having a woman in power as the cover of the game and in the trailer as the main focus, I think it's great. It's annoying that I have to call it a statement, but it's a statement because it's done so painfully obviously and so poorly. If you wanted to put a female soldier on the cover, why not use something that was actually, I don't know, plausible? Okay, let me just acknowledge, good intention. Terrible execution. That's what this is. Now, apparently EA delayed the release of Battlefield uh, until November. I think it's probably a good move, to be honest. Uh, this did cause the stocks of EA to drop a lot. And uh, I'm gonna keep developing this story and see how it goes, because it's uh, it's interesting to me. PewDiePie, my favorite YouTube channel. I'm not supposed to give my opinion. I'm just Poppy Harlow. But my favorite YouTube channel is being overtaken by this channel T-Series. You probably heard about this already, but later this year, PewDiePie will no longer be the biggest channel on YouTube. It will be overrun by the channel T-Series. Now, PewDiePie bravely challenged T-Series to a fight to the death, and they have yet to respond to his request. What a bunch of cowards. PewDiePie has gathered a lot of support by Mr. Beast, for example, Leon Lush, 
We don't stand a chance against the population of India. Sometimes it's not about who's going to win. It's about being on the right side of history. The all-inclusive channel or the Indians, huh? War. War is coming, T-Series. Be aware. Now, this was covered uh, by, of course, <laughs> The Verge. The Verge and The Polygon. Same company. It's the same company owned by Vox. Interesting. They're the only ones covering this. Now, okay. For, let it be clear. I don't care, okay? I know that's a false statement because if I say I don't care, I am saying I care enough to say that I care and then just go on and it doesn't make any sense. I know. The thing is, I have expressed that I don't want to be the number one channel on YouTube for a long time, okay? I would prefer if someone else passes me. If T if T Series was an actual individual and not a company, I would gladly congratulate them on becoming number one. It, it genuinely doesn't bother me. There are, are already channels bigger than me, but no one's talking about that. You have music, gaming, sports, and YouTube movies. I'm technically the fifth biggest YouTuber. <laughs> now, of course, Polygon. They always know how to grind my gears. So instead of talking about this, I wanted to bring up the point that they bring up in this uh, article. Where Polygon brings up this video from MatPat, which says, Ironically, what helped Shelber become the king of YouTube, as explained by Matt Patrick in the video, Shelber managed to reach audiences in countries like Sweden, Italy, France, France, okay, and the UK, while also building up a fan base in the United States. And I've heard this argument so many times. It, it's just one of those things that people keep saying, and then it, so, it suddenly takes on its truth on its own. Because Matt did this video, which is a really good video. I still hate it, and I think he should delete it. Because he made this speculation. But why this Let's Play channel? There's thousands out there. Well, there's one other reason the algorithm loves PewDiePie. He's international. You see, YouTube promotes channels locally. If you live in California, your videos will be served up in California more frequently than in other areas of the US. And if you live in the US, your videos will stay in the US until you gather enough views from other countries to merit them sharing your stuff there. PewDiePie has a unique advantage over most other channels because YouTube considers his channel Swedish since he started it when he was living in Sweden. Makes sense. Since then, he's moved, meaning that he lives and uploads from Italy, but he also speaks English. So, since YouTube promotes locally, he was able to gather a strong Swedish following in a market where there was less competition, but now that he uploads from Italy, he gets promoted there, and since YouTube is most heavily used in English-speaking nations, he had a much easier time crossing into the US and UK than a channel from here would have doing the reverse. Okay, Matt, you had no idea what you're talking about. This is such a dumb video and I hate, I like, if, if you want to piss me off, just say, oh, well, PewDiePie, he just grew because he moved countries. The reason this annoys me especially is because it's the complete opposite. When I started off doing YouTube, there was a lot of ways to poke through the system. There was a lot of ways you could deliberately do to make your channel grow quicker. That was uh, technically not allowed, but YouTube didn't really stop anyone from doing it. One of those things would be that you could set your channel country in your setting. You, you can set your country to anything and YouTube will acknowledge your channel as that. It wasn't location based, it was purely based on the settings. And back in 2013, the front page of YouTube was a big part of growing your channel. It was probably how you gather the most subscribers. If you got on the front page of YouTube, that was a massive deal. And yes, each front page on each country was different. So a Swedish, so Sweden did have their own front page, just like America has their own front page. Just like there was also a worldwide front page. So what people did was they would set their channel as Swedish even though they were American. So the front page of Sweden was nothing but American channels abusing the system so they would get views from Sweden when they weren't even from Sweden. While people who were Swedish didn't grow from it. It annoys me because I was so frustrated by, by this back in 2013. I kind of pride myself I, that I've never abused YouTube system to grow my channel. It's one of those things where I've seen while growing my own channel, a lot of other people do 
and benefiting from it as well. So when people make these statements saying, oh, he just grew his channel because, you know, he moved from Italy to UK to Sweden, that gave him that boost. It's, it takes away the value of all the work I put into this channel, working my ass off the last seven years. And yes, it pisses me off. So this whole thing couldn't be more false, but it's one of those things that keep being reiterated as truth, it, despite me debunking it. It's annoying because people take Matt's speculation as some form of true it. And here it is, five years later being reported as true. I don't think I deserve 65 million subscribers. I genuinely don't. It makes no sense to me. I don't want to be the biggest channel. Like I said, I don't care. I don't care. I just want to be making videos, do my own thing. Everything else is just annoying. Dealing with this stuff is annoying. It's kind of fun too, okay? But it's annoying. <laughs> None of this make, makes any sense to me. Like, uh, why my channel got so big, it doesn't make sense to me either. I have no idea. I was the least popular guy in school. I don't understand it still. I still think I'm really, there's nothing special about my content. So I understand that people want a reason for it. Another thing that's annoying about this article is that, or at least in The Verge, if you ever want to control a narrative, if you ever want something to seem a certain way, all you gotta do is just hand select a few comments. Look at this. You can't just hand pick comments. I don't know why they keep doing it. Well, I know why. Brofist Army, where are you? You dare challenge the king? Alexa, delete this channel. <laughs> War is coming. Prepare yourself, T Series. Skills and no one asked you! T Series videos have recently been mostly overrun by swarms of PewDiePie related comments. Some in which encourage people to downvote and report channels' uploads. So they're trying to make it seem like, yeah, well, it's, it's all a bunch of nine year olds, which it is, by the way, uh, spamming this poor channel. This poor channel, okay? I think, I think the video that gets 15 million views in two days will be okay. I think they will survive. T-Series, accept my challenge to the death. Until then, the swarm of nine-year-olds will keep coming after you. And The Verge. And anyone that dare challenge us. That's right. I pledge my allegiance to PewDiePie. Sorry, we're out of time. I'm Poppy Harlow. Thank you for smashing like on this video. It supports this channel, along with hitting the sponsor button. Arigato gozaimasu. And I'll see you guys next week. I'm Poppy Harlow.